going to take you to the Johnson Space Center now, where the two astronauts who completed the first water landing by an American space crew since 1975 are speaking after their return to Earth. Let's listen. Well, excited to be back. We're already working through our uh, exercise and rehabilitation program to kind of get our Earth legs back. Um, we were lucky that we... Uh, we worked out pretty hard on Space Station, and I think we've both uh, done pretty well up to this point. Um, we're also lucky in the fact that we landed in some pretty smooth waters, thanks to the weather folks. And so I think that helped a lot. Uh, just incredibly uh, excited to be back, incredibly excited to share the uh, mission with all of you in another way, and uh, just so proud of the uh, SpaceX and NASA teams to uh, get Dragon through its first crewed flight uh, flawlessly. Uh, just uh, we're almost kind of uh, speechless as uh, as far as how well the vehicle did and how how well the mission went uh, and all the things we did on board ISS with uh, Chris Cassidy and Anatoly and Yvonne. Uh, so just glad to be back and. Uh, it's great to see how excited uh, everybody was uh, for our, our mission and followed along, and, and we hope it brings a little bit of brightness to a pretty tough 2020. Thank you, Doug. We'll now hand it over to Bob Benkin. I think uh, Doug pretty much covered most of the things that uh, either one of us would say about the, the mission itself. Um, I would just add that you know, it's a, it's a humbling experience to be a part of uh, what was accomplished with the SpaceX vehicle. Just a, a wonderful team on the NASA side and the SpaceX side uh, to pull it all off. Uh, it took years in the making. I think Doug and I have been uh, working at it for a good solid five years to, to get to this point, and it's just uh, awesome to kind of see it to fruition. I know that uh, one of the things that we're most proud of is, is bringing launch capability back to the Florida coast, back to America and of course, uh, landing safely at the end of all of that. And so uh, just, uh, again, humbled to be a part of uh, such an awesome team and, and uh, awed by what they accomplished. Thanks to you both for those initial remarks. We'll now open it up for questions. Again, if you're on our phone bridge, please press star one to submit a question. To ensure we get to everyone's questions, please refrain from asking more than one at a time. We'll have a lot of questions, so if you find that yours has already been answered, press star two to withdraw it. And if you're on social media, please use the hashtag AskNASA. Let's start on our phone bridge first with Lauren Grush from The Verge. Hi, Bob and Doug. Good to talk to you, and congratulations on such a great launch. Um, leading up to this mission, the date of the launch was always so uncertain, and you mentioned you would plan your life in increments of weeks or months at a time. So I'm wondering how does it feel now after all that buildup, now that it's over and you have a little more certainty in your schedule again? Thanks. <laughs> That's a good question. I, I don't know if certainty is the right word at this point. You know, it, it, I think for both of us it still feels uh, pretty surreal, and I know that's a little bit overused, but I don't know how else to describe it. You know, one minute you're bobbing in the Gulf of Mexico, and, you know, less than two days later you're in a news conference. So. Um, you know, it's been a time to reflect and, and, and think about a lot of a lot of the things that went on in the lead up to the mission, the mission itself, you know, the launch, the on orbit time, the entry, the landing. Uh, but yeah, at least we know we're done with the mission, which, you know, we didn't even really know launch dates until just a few months before we launched. We didn't know the duration of the mission until a few weeks before we came home. And uh, so I guess it's nice uh, in that in that respect, to, to be back with our family and our friends here at NASA and, and working through uh, the post-flight activities that we have. And they're pretty pretty well scheduled for the next few weeks, for sure. In fact, there's a lot of stuff uh, to do over the next few weeks. So we're hoping at some point just to take some time off and, and, and share a little more time with our families since the, they were the ones that really had the sacrifice over the, as Bob said, over the last five years. Um, because we were, we were mostly in California, and we were mostly, obviously, the last two months in space. Next, we'll go to Andrea Leinfelder from the Houston Chronicle. Hey, welcome home. Bob, you gave a really great description of what it was like to launch in the Crew Dragon. I was hoping you could give us a similarly vivid account of what it was like to land. Thank you. Well, thank you, Andrea. You know, the, uh, the landing was... 
I would say it was more than what uh, Doug and I expected. Um, things are, are always uh, pretty smooth as you work through a deorbit burn, because of course you're, you're still in low Earth orbit uh, while you take that little bit of energy out that it takes to lower you into the atmosphere and uh, start the trip home. Um, as we kind of descended through the atmosphere, I personally was uh, surprised at, at just how quickly it all, the events all transpired. Um, it seemed like uh, just a, a couple minutes later after the burn was complete, we could look out the windows and see the clouds rushing by at uh, a much accelerated rate. You know, one of the things we didn't have a lot of time to do during our time docked to station with how busy we were was to really focus on the Earth for an extended period of time. And, and during free flight and Dragon, we were able to do that and probably had a pretty good feel for the, the rate that the Earth was moving below us. And we could definitely tell things were picking up quick after we started that burn. Um, once we descended a little bit into the atmosphere, you know, Dragon really, it came alive. It uh, started to, to fire thrusters and, and keep us pointed in the appropriate direction. Um, the atmosphere starts to make noise. You can, you can hear that uh, rumble um, outside the vehicle. And as the vehicle tries to control, you feel a little bit of that, that shimmy in your body. And, and our bodies were much better attuned to the environment. So we could feel those small rolls and pitches and yaws and all those little motions were, were things that we picked up on inside the vehicle. As we descended through the atmosphere, the, uh, the thrusters were firing almost continuously. And I think uh, this the sound that that makes. I, I did record some audio of it, but uh, it doesn't sound like a machine. It sounds like an animal coming through the atmosphere with all that, uh, all the, the puffs that are happening from the, uh, the thrusters and, and the atmospheric noise. It uh, just continues to uh, gain magnitude as you, as you descend down through the atmosphere. And I think we both really, really noticed that aspect of things. Um, all the separation events from the trunk separation through the parachute firings were very much like getting uh, hit in the back of the chair with a baseball bat, you know, just a crack. And then uh, you'd get a, some sort of a motion associated with that, usually pretty light for the trunk separation. But with the parachutes, it was a pretty significant jolt. Um, and a couple of jolts as you go through the disreefing of the parachutes as well. And so uh, all the way down, uh, we, we were talking about it. I think uh, I took a line from an old movie that Doug and I were both familiar with at one point, because uh, under the G load of about 4.2 Gs, I uh, said, want to get some coffee? You know, much like we had seen in a, an old movie that we had watched, because that was really the, the feeling that we had had, and that's the best way to describe it. If you've seen a, an old movie that happened to have some guys uh, uh, who'd been in the center Refuge, that's what we felt like. When the time came to splash down, I think we were watching the altimeter, which is a GPS altimeter, so it's not super accurate everywhere that you're located. And so we got to uh, uh, below zero for our altitude on that indicator, which was uh, a little bit surprising. And then we, we felt the splash and we saw it splash up over the windows. It was just a uh, a great relief, I think, for both of us at that point. And uh, I can't say enough at, about how well the SpaceX team trained us. You know, they provided us some audio clips of uh, what it was like inside the Demo 1 vehicle so that we were familiar with all those sounds. And uh, uh, reassuring is not quite the right word um, because we think of it more in technical, technical terms as, you know, pilots and engineers riding along with that vehicle. But uh, when it performed as expected and we could check off those events, uh, we were really, really comfortable uh, coming through the atmosphere, even though, you know, uh, it felt like we were inside of an animal.